Hey YouTube, here's this 2011 Chrysler 300 with 35,000 miles. This will be the first tour that I ever do of this year 300. This is the V6 model with the Pentastar engine under the hood. See, it has a capless fuel filler. Hmm, that's broken. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It broke right off, it looks. That shows off the quality nicely already. <laughs> See, it doesn't even want to close. That's junk. I wonder what's up with these weather strips, too. Hmm, there you go. I'm trying to look at this piece of chrome here, too, on top of the door. This comes right off. And this chrome piece does look a bit flimsy. I really don't like it. That end cap will definitely go. Someday. Well, let's do a tour of this one. You can tell that was a Hyundai or a Kia. <laughs> How can you not forget that crank? Oh, there's a better look at the interior. Let's start. Oh, it smells like stale water in this car. Looks like it was poorly detailed and they left the carpet wet. We'll start it up. You can see how gross that display is. It's just d disgusting. Ugh. Push button start. The instrument cluster was nicely updated though. The older 300 had a rather ugly instrument cluster. Very cheap looking. You can see the infotainment center. Doesn't seem to have nav. I really don't see that feature here. Think of it like a dummy version of my Ford Touch without nav, I guess. Anyways, that's first impressions of interior quality. It is a huge step up compared to the uh, 2010 model, which had trashy interior. I know people don't like me using that term, but it is truth. The older car had a crap interior. Entire dashboard, soft touch. Over the instrument cluster, it is leather wrapped. I don't like how flimsy it is up here. Very loose. It seems to be leather wrapped up here. You can see the exposed stitching. Steering wheel, it is just thick. <laughs> you can't miss the steering wheel. I love that it's thick all the way around with the exposed stitching, hands free controls, and control system info, car info such as distance to empty and such, cruise control, steering wheel, tilts and telescopes. You can see once you just latch it. Push button start again. In this area of the center console, it's all soft touch. This cover over here isn't nicely put together. You can see how it's nicely tight up here. Hope you guys can see. Nicely tight and it seems to open up over here. I don't like that. Again, the infotainment center doesn't seem to have nav or anything like that. It seems to have Bluetooth because you can see phone settings. Climate control. Everything's touch screen. It seems responsive. A little bit better than Ford's My Ford Touch system. Radio, I don't want to know about that. Climate control, it is dual zone. You can still control the radios here. You still have physical buttons. Hazards. Stability control. It is placed in a terrible location. They integrated it within the climate control, so somebody will hit this by mistake without wanting to. So you have a little media card slot in dash CD. Hmm. What the hell? There we go. This is already somewhat broken. You can see a power outlet. Doesn't even want to clip down. There we go. This is flimsy. This is badly made. For a moment, it didn't even want to work. <sighs> Whoa. No way. Look at this plastic here. It's all cracking. What the fuck is this? 2011 car! 
There's no way that something like that should be happening to such a new car. Unless there's a thin plastic film on top that peels off, but it doesn't seem to be the case. This car comes with a five-speed auto with manual shift mode. Hmm. I don't like how flimsy that looks. And look how dirty it gets. It accumulates dirt terribly. Where the hell did this coin holder come from? I'll just throw it in there for a moment. <sighs> Shit. This wood section here comes right off. Not very nice. Without any effort. Let's right off. Hope you guys saw that. The chrome here, the chrome finish is already peeling. You can see there. I feel terrible having to bash this car because I really had high hopes. Well, I saw this at the New York Auto Show, but now that I, you can see the car suffering through some wear and tear, <laughs> it's not that good. This chrome can actually cut you. It feels very sharp. It's already peeling. Dual cup holder seems to have some ambient lighting in here. You can see the rings. Center console. It is fairly large. It's not that bad. It has its aux jack and USB power outlet. Toss this in here and it will serve as a little container and coin holder. Center console is sure footed but the lid isn't. Feels very flimsy. It is padded nicely though. It doesn't slide forward. Glove box. It is damped. One huge lid. It's not really that huge, it's just a huge lid. It's just up here. There's a little space up there which is quite deep. You just store your owner's manual. Hmm? I don't like how you can already hear the sound of a retracting spring. You can hear that squeak. I hate that squeak. The lid is all hard touch. You can see how fit and finish of this glove box isn't too nice. You can see nicely tight here seems to open up as you run down. And you can see over there at the edge, at the corner, doesn't shut evenly. It's quite uneven. And it's not the angle. <laughs> That's how it is. Analog clock. Trunk to slatch, panel dim. Headlamps. Not too amazed with fit and finish up here on the headliner. You can see it starts out nice and tight, seems to open up slightly, then tightens right back up again. Sun visor is very plush. Mirror and vanity light. Has a little shade that slides right out. Headliner is quite plush. Lighting fixtures. Holder for the sunglasses. You can see you could jump it off track, just pushing it slightly. You can see rearview mirror dims, and there's the passenger side sun visor, mirror, and vanity light, also with a little shit that slides right out. <sighs> Take a look under the hood. This tour is taking forever. Top of the door panel, everything is soft touch, nicely padded. Everything here on the sides, even the armrest. Lower sections cheapens right up to the traditional Chrysler. Sharp edge, flimsy, cheap plastics. Fuel filler lid, that's where you dislatch it. Power windows, power locks, window lock, and power mirrors. Both front windows go up and down automatically. Yeah, it does happen. Oh. Back seat, average size, it's not too bad. Lower section is a glove, it's just very plush and soft. Rear AC, power outlet. Again, legroom isn't too bad. Headroom isn't too bad either, you can see. It does have a high rear deck though, so visibility may not be too great for the rather short people. Armrest, you can store things. It's a bit flimsy, you can see how twisty it is. I like how the cup holder is placed up front so they won't intrude with elbow comfort like uh, Ford is doing where they put this huge hunk of plastic right in the middle. But I'm not gonna get into that. Seats do fold down, just pull these straps. 60-40 split seating, but this seat belt will be in the way. But it does fold down. So yeah. Quad oh shit handles, so you have oh shit handles on every single door, so it's not too bad. 
this plastic cover up here. It was just open like this. I don't like that. <laughs> For a 2011 car, it really doesn't withstand wear and tear that well. You can see your trunk lighting in the trunk. Again, it is fairly wide up here, but it gets fairly narrow once you get farther in. Spare tire, battery, cargo net jack. Everything is right there. This is a donut. I like how the hinges are hidden. They're not exposed. It does have a backup camera. You can see the little lens right there. This is where you open the trunk. Just push this button. It doesn't want to work on me right now. So I want to take a look at the engine. It will be the familiar 3.6 liter dual red cam. V6. It's the time to start. I wasn't impressed with how this engine sounded when I started up a 2011 caravan with six or 7,000 miles and it was a rather ugly startup. Everything is covered up so you really can't see anything. But naturally this engine isn't really that attractive looking so it's best that they cover it. To the front end, it is very attractive looking. And I don't like how over here on the header panel you have this huge gap. It starts to close right up over here. Then it starts to open up a little bit again and then closes up a little bit. Opens up and then, once again, closes up. That is quite sloppy. On this side, it doesn't seem to be that bad. That side was worse. A lot of chrome on this car. And this does have 18 inch wheels. Well, what is this? Look at this door. It is properly shut, and there's no signs of damage to the car, but look at the door. Nice and tight. You can see how it just opens up a little bit over here. So you go down, opens up. Pops open a little bit. You can see how it begins to open right up over here. You can look at this huge gap. I don't like that. Let me see, is the other side like that? No. Or not as bad. Hmm. Maybe something did happen to this car. These aren't even chrome wheels either. These are simulators. Right on top of the wheel. You can hear it. So it's possible that these are just regular aluminum wheels or steel wheels and then just put these wheel covers on top. You won't be able to take them off though. Ford does that too. It's a rev limiter. YouTube. 
That's the 2011 Chrysler 300.